Hey guys, it's Brooke with The Junk Parlor and I'm gonna show you what I came home with this week during my thrifting hauls. So I ended up finding or going out probably about three different days just because of doctor's visits and different things happening in our life. But I am most excited about the places that I'm gonna be going next week. So make sure if you're not already subscribing that you click that button so that you can see where I go next week. A couple of these things that I picked up, um, it's pretty bright light there. You can see that a little bit better. Um, I already shared during my Wednesday market on Instagram. You can also see it on Facebook stories. This is 2005 USA, a matte pottery piece. Kind of hard to see, but I'm going to also just put a picture here of the items I picked up. One of the pieces did sell during that Wednesday sale. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, then make sure you go over there and check me out. So that was one of the pieces I got basically over the weekend. The other piece that sold was also a matte vase um, or a planter. I did pick up two paint by numbers and you can see they are bridges, they are framed. I am probably going to unframe them. I'm very kind of curious and also hesitant to unframe them because when you look at them kind of from an angle, which I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell on the camera, there looks like there's glossier and duller spots. So I don't know if it has like stuck to the glass or what the situation is. This frame is actually broken here in the corner where the glass part is. So I'll probably just separate them out and sell the paint by number um, by itself unframed. Also on that little day trip, I got this cute little yellow and blue iron. Yellow and blue is not typically my color, but little irons sell really well for me. So I grabbed this little guy. I did share over on Instagram my haul from after going to the dermatologist and shared a couple stories about the dermatologist visit and um, just funny situations about <laughs> my body and moles. So this is a huge ironstone platter that I got and tell me down in the comments like is this really a platter are there such things as shallow ironstone bowls because this is very angled and very deep and I just don't have any others like this I have been kind of hoarding on to these and making little stacks um, this was at a consignment shop, so that is the consigner's number, I think, but this one is a Pankhurst, uh, stone china one, but I mean, is it a platter? That's what I'm going to call it, but I'm going to have to find some good ones to stack with it because it's just so, so deep. Also that day, I picked up this little matte pottery piece. I'm guessing it's a planter. Um, somebody had said maybe it's like an egg holder, which it possibly could be. I do have an ostrich egg, but that's the size it would be. It wouldn't be like a normal egg cup or anything. It's not marked. Again, same spot where it had the consigners, and this was at do-overs. The flower kind of got my attention, and I've been looking for some planters because I'm going to try to keep some plants alive, um, not typically my thing, but the planter, again, this cream off white color. I don't know if you can see all the crazing and crackling. There are a few little like dings at the top, which I don't even know if that, that's a little ding, I guess. Here's probably the, the one that's like definitely a ding. My flower's hitting my light. But I'm like, oh, this just looks like a McCoy piece. So I looked over it and I didn't move the sticker or anything because I know McCoy, even if it's the in, in the different stamps, normally they're so big that you can see them. So I knew that this was an unmarked one. That didn't mean that it wasn't McCoy though. I did a Google lens search and found out that it was a McCoy. What are these silver dollars? I think is what it is. And so I'm so glad that I trusted my gut and went ahead and got it. And then just kind of a neat idea because I would say somebody did this. It wasn't, you know, from the store like this. 
They took and cut some styrofoam to fit the planter. They glued on some moss and then stuck in this flower, which I should know what it's called, but I can't think of. The leaves on this thing are like soft rubber. They are so, so realistic. But anyway, this gives me an idea of something to do in a future project with some faux plants. So these two look really good together. And then that white one um, is similar but different. But anyway, kind of the start of a collection. Then for my thrifting haul on Thursday. So every Thursday I go. It has been hands down every snow day that we have had has fallen on a Thursday. So I did kind of limit how many places I went to because in the morning especially, it was still slick because it was cold. Luckily it's March, it's warm enough here that the roads had been treated, they're warm. So it really didn't hang around a long time on the roads, although it literally snowed all day. I was so happy with my finds this week. This cute little lunch box, so cute with the little farmer scene on it. It even has a little like name label plate. It is a thermos brand. It does not have the thermos inside. And then somebody has done their own little leather handle, which I like better anyway. And I actually, for my staging your antique shop group, had arranged this shelf for them because one of the things that we talk about is staging and how to create a good look. So I will share um, what the finished product looks like when we get done seeing what I picked. I did not get one, but I got two lunch boxes, tartan pattern. One is an Ohio art and one is a thermos. And I think the Ohio art one, I got the same place thriftyfully as I got the barn one, but I love these. They're super popular. Neither one of them have the thermos in them. The, um, this one that is a thermos brand, it actually, the hinges are broken. So it's just a pull off lid essentially, but to me that doesn't matter. It's still awesome. Here is that cabinet that I staged with my staging your antique shop group, kind of going over some staging or design principles and rules that you can follow to make, you know, nice vignettes. I don't know why, but some alabaster pieces have really been calling my name. I couldn't just scrape this old sticker off. I need to get some something wet or goo gone, but I love this little elephant trunk up supposed to be good luck. I don't keep very many things guys. <laughs> I promise you, but I might have to keep this bowl for a while. Uh, yes, it is absolutely as yummy <laughs> in person as it looks on the camera. So it did feel kind of weird when I was touching it at the store. Um, and I took a Clorox wipe and kind of wiped it down and a lot of gunk came off. So it did need it. There is no maker's mark on it. I don't think that it's ironstone. I just think that it's a pottery, uh, piece but the crazy discoloration on it, I mean, so amazing. Love that. This probably I'm gonna hit with a clear coat because it's just got that snag everything rusty feel. It is a flag stand. It says 1883, like CRW, um, to the Grand Army of the Republic Auxiliary. So I thought so many options. One, you could set a smaller cloche on here. I actually had one close by, so we might as well see how it looks. So you could do something like this and I could put some faux flower stems in there or hat pins or paint brushes and, and put it in a cloche. I could just leave it out. Um, I probably would like actually a cloche a little bit smaller to fit on here securely or you can get a cloche that was bigger than the whole thing, including the feet. Even those, what do you even call them? Not a, well, maybe you call them a chimney. So like a chimney that goes on a gas lamp or an oil lamp, 
but the ones that kind of are like hourglass shape that you see at the thrift store all the time, they're wider at the bottom, sitting that like completely over this cast iron flag base, I think that would look awesome too. This wooden box um, attracted me, not really because of any particular reason, but I love old boxes to use as risers and just for some color variation. I did like that it had the Blue Ridge Glass Corporation um, on it. It has a really nice hinge or latch, I should say. And then bonus, it's divided on the inside and there was a bunch of random dice. So you could really like stand it up like this and then put some little figurines or whatever you collect in there. You could actually, the, the hinge is a, like a nice tight one, so it would hold it. You could do it like this, set a little postcard or ephemera, which I know I always say ephemera, and I know it's wrong. It's a better than it used to be. I will try and remember ephemera. I'm terrible at pronunciation, terrible at spelling, terrible about <laughs> thinking what word am I trying to use. Then I was at the thrift store and I was really torn on these. There was a squirrel, there was a, another little bird and he had his beak broken, so I didn't get it. But these are hand carved by Barb Church, Barb, Bob Church and then they have like painted or stained the bird. What is this, a finch maybe? It's on pretty thick wood, which kind of I didn't like as much. They have put some felt in the back. You do have a sawtooth hanger so you can hang it. So I ended up only getting the two because I didn't want the one with the broken beak. And then I did go ahead and get the largest one which I'll show you too to kind of compare sizes. And the largest one, I think that is a robin. But just the talent that went in to carving the little concave section, to doing all the detailing on the bird, I mean, this guy had some skills. Isn't it funny how like different seasons of your life you're attracted to different things? So lately I have been really attracted to footstools. I don't even get the point of a footstool really. <laughs> Maybe if you were sitting in a rocker that didn't have the kick, kick out for your feet, you would want to do that. Maybe if you were short, I'm really not sure. So I'm really not sure how I personally would use this stool but I would probably just like set it out in front of the fireplace or set it somewhere. Our, I'm really weird and I have a stool, which is basically just like a wood square. I'll show you a picture here. And my grandma had it in her kitchen. I don't even remember if we sat on it or if she just had books and magazines set on it or what the situation was, but I kept that. And in the last house, I would always sit on it um, while I was waiting for dinner to cook or just to screw around on my phone. And I do that here too. And so I could see using this in the kitchen um, as well, just to stand up and get things or just to sit and scroll on your phone and wait for the timer to go off on whatever you're cooking. So you know I love green. This does have some yellow in it, which I don't mind gold. It would go with my brass stuff. This has metal feet. The ones I've really been attracted to lately have wooden feet. And normally they're a little bit more tattered and beat up, but they also have a good price tag on them um, to show that. So this one, you can tell that there must have been some kind of plastic cover on it that somebody has ripped off. I feel like it's a little bit loose right here, but overall, this thing is beautiful and I love it. It was a good price, so I bought it. I know I've shared jar grabbers before, okay? So you have your jar and you use the handle to grab it and pull it out of the hot water, okay? This one has green handle, I love. And then I, I know I've also showed you how you can use it as a riser. So what do I have here? This is not quite big enough, but you can get something similar. 
See, this one's not wide enough either. But basically, this one's wide enough because the plate at least hits both ends of the holder. So it would sit completely fine like this. It just gives another dimension to use it as a riser. Um, and so that's really how I like to style them. So I grabbed this just for that reason. Isn't it funny how we are just attracted to things when we go out? I normally pass up mashers unless they are just amazing. And today I found um, three. They all have a different look, but they would look really good together. These two could obviously sit. This one would need to go in a bowl or a crock or something. Um, you could just put all three of them in a colander. That would be a nice thing because it's pretty shallow. You could still see all the wood detailing. And then another cool way that I have seen these displayed before is basically you could do ribbon or twine, um, anything, but I'm thinking more some twine. You tie a knot around each of the handles and then kind of like a fish stringer, they had the um, mashers basically just dangling, you know, like they're all dangling from string that they're knotted on. It looked super cute. Now I get mashers a lot more than I get rolling pins, but these were a good price and for whatever reason they called my name. I mean, obviously the green one called my name because it's green. And this one looks like it probably had red handles at one point. Another thing that if you've been watching my hauls, you know I'm kind of trying to plan to make a Christmas tree out of rolling pins and I really don't have any big ones. So let's see how these look with what I have. And then what I really need to do is write down what sizes I need and put it in the little note section on my phone so that when I'm out, because I did pass up a couple small ones because I wasn't sure if they would go, but I need to have that little note in my phone so I can just look and see, oh, I need this size. I do have notes in my phone for like, I'm wanting a round coffee table, still haven't found one. So I have sizes for that. And then I have sizes for something else in my phone as well. Um, just because that's the easiest way for me to remember what I am looking for, what I need. And so now I need to add the rolling pin sizes in there as well. Also, when I visited the dermatologist, I scored this amazing painting. I'm not sure if it's oil or acrylic. It is in a little shallow white frame, but it is on canvas. And it was kind of stuck between a couple cabinets and I just went ahead and pulled it out. I couldn't find a tag. So I asked the girl if she could check because again, this was at a consignment shop. And so she pulled it up and guess how much it was. It was only $13. I figured it was going to be out of my price range and I wouldn't be able to get it. I mean, do you see how big this thing is? It's huge for $13. You know, I'm always picking up music pieces. This is, luckily it says on the thing because I wouldn't even know, a Menzenhauer's Guitar Zither. It's a special St. Louis model. So it's not in perfect condition by any means, but I love the coloring. You can see that there's a board right here um, split and the board up here is split. The sticker on the inside is still there. I just love, love, love the coloring on this. It would look great hanging on somebody's wall or leaning on an open shelf. Just gorgeous. I couldn't resist another musical instrument, even though I didn't even know what it was. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check in next week. Click that subscribe button. Click the ring the bell so you get a notification because I'm telling you, I've got a couple awesome places to go next week and I can't wait to share them with you.